Hello everybody, today is February 1st, and you know what that means? Brussels sprout planting season. Exactly, that's Woo! the first thing I was thinking of when I thought of February. And we're doing business and social links to share with your friends. Is that the Brussels sprouts dance? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try I did Brussels sprouts last year in the spring, but I started them way too late and so it got too hot and then they just bolted and they didn't I didn't get any Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna start them really early this year and see how they do. You know who's gonna have a ton of time to plant Brussels sprouts come February? Everyone in this section. The IBM employees. Yeah. <laughs> IBM cuts thirty nine hundred jobs and misses its annual cash target. And this has gotta be the beginning of the business slash collapse section, right? I mean the everybody's favorite, the collapse section. I, I suggested that we just show all these headlines over the like Curb Your Enthusiasm theme. <laughs> Which is copyright just like, music. Yeah, yeah, just like a rapid cut. So you know we can't use it. <laughs> we can't have fun. But we here. could ask AI to come up with something vaguely similar. thematically yeah. similar. Maybe we could find some alternative on Spotify. Spotify to trim 6% of its workforce and latest tech layoffs. Yikes. Now, what's disturbing to me about all? What's the next one? Is it do we do we have one? Do we do we have another one for Google, or we already co we covered Google's layoff last week? I think. Yeah, Google. I think there are some stories about Google in here, but yeah, we covered the big number last week. The thing that's disturbing: the IBM, most of the the, the packages, some of the packages for these companies are not great, but like the layoff packages for Google and some of the other ones, uh, I thought IBM what had been described wasn't bad in a lot of cases, but some of those. People are going to be paid for well over a year. And so that tells me, like, none of these stories that we've read about these talk about how, what sort of economic outlook do these companies have if they think that we're just going to pay this person for a year and we consider that a good deal. They're just, their severance package is over a year or two years or three years. But, and the, so they're, they're thinking long game. Yeah, they'll be able to pay off that year and hire somebody for half the salary at the end of that year and make it all back. Yeah. So they're just shaking off. Why don't people have any loyalty to the companies they work for anymore? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of the people that were laid off from Google probably have millions in stock if they haven't you know, sold it all. And, you know, I was surprised how many people were posting like, ah, I've been working for Google for 10 years. Um, The, the guy that did the SMB, the open source SMB, he was laid off from Google. I mean, it's just, that's very surprising. Well, this one's not a tech company per se, but of course, you know, they have to have technology and this is their tech workers. Capital One scraps 1100 tech positions, according to this from Reuters. Uh, level one prediction, Capital One suffers a massive breach, <laughs> in which uh, all of their cardholder data is lost and everybody's gonna have to get new credit cards. Uh, yeah, I did include this one. This oh, was yeah, yeah. Okay. January 20, so we probably already covered this one last week. But let's just remind everybody. Google access 12,000 jobs as layoffs spread across the tech sector. <laughs> Engagement challenge. Did you work for Google and were you laid off? Again, the surprising thing here is that in some of these larger companies, the severance packages are extremely long for severance packages. It's like six months plus. And Google's was, you get an extra four weeks for every year or every ever how many... The people that have worked for Google for like 10 years plus are going to have over a year of paid time off. Now I remember why I put the Google story in there. It's because this. So the Google issue is that like that's a lot of people, but Google is a publicly traded company. They have activist investors. Those investors want to make money over anything and they have a little bit of control or at least they can make suggestions. Google institutional investor calls for a wider cut, 30,000 jobs. Yeah, this is the story that made me think of the whole, what do these people know that make them think that the economic outlook is so bleak that not having these people ready to go in, this is not a quick turnaround. Like if this were a six month or a one year or a two year turnaround in economic conditions, wouldn't it be more advantageous to hang on to talent that's already, you know, onboarded and ready to go. And you see those big numbers and, you know, you kind of think of it in an abstract way, but it all boils down to people and teams inside the company. They're not all doing the same thing. So parts of the things that these companies are working on are just being cut in whole. Microsoft kills off alt space VR amid major layoffs. That's their metaverse competitor, isn't it? Not anymore. <laughs> Oh no. And uh, it's interesting when these, these companies are like, listen, we got to cut to the bone. We can't be wasting money 
on these employees. We need that money to stay, you know, in the market. We need to stay relevant. And then you see stuff like this and you really can't blame those people for hating Microsoft. Microsoft under fire for hosting private Sting concert for its execs in Davos the night before the announcing mass layoffs. You really can't blame people for sharpening up the guillotine a little bit. <laughs> That's and it was, when he says Davos, he's talking about the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Right. But in fairness, with the number of people that they've laid, laid off here, I'm sure that Mr. Sting has uh, charged a tiny, tiny fraction of the amount of money that they're going to save by not having those people employed anymore. What a cool, rebellious way to think for yourself and be a, like a cool musician to do private shows for Microsoft. <laughs> it's also Sting. What a cool guy. Wasn't, didn't the Rolling Stones do that? Like, what about, uh, remember when Windows 95 launched, they got the licensing rights to include, uh, uh, what was it, uh, booted up? Is that Buffett? Started up. Started up, yeah. That's Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Or yeah, Start yeah. Me Up, maybe. So. Yeah. so. Well, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about phones and how people are clinging to their old phones because they are now poor and phones are expensive. Well, now we see the numbers. Smartphone shipments plunge to a low not seen since 2013 and their largest ever decline. Why? Because smart the, the only upgrade you're getting is battery. Like... Uh, the people in this office, when I talk to them, it's like, what are you looking forward to with a new phone? It's like, well, having a working battery again. That's yeah. the number one feature. My phone's kind of getting a little long in the tooth, and I'm like, maybe. It, but I'm also like, it still works. It just doesn't hold the charge. It's like, we can, we can steam that thing apart and put a new battery in. There's no reason you have to get a new phone. It is a pain, but. Just rent the Apple suitcase. <laughs> uh, I don't have an Apple phone. You have to do the. Well, you got a Samsung. You have to do the Samsung one. We we've got to do some sort of skit with that. Like some sort of. We got to go to like one of these abandoned factories and just very anachronistically feed it an iPhone and like all these steam whistles go off and you know it's like what's happening? It's it's changing the battery. <laughs> Maybe Amazon will do that because Amazon is very pro robot. They've really been doing a lot to make their factories more friendly to robots. Maybe not so much for the rest of the workers. <laughs> Robots are treated better. This is a quote from an Amazon worker, an Amazon warehouse uh, worker, stage a, their first ever strike in the UK. Yikes. I, I ordered socks on Amazon and I haven't talked to my neighbor. I think they went to their house. Oh my God. What if they answer the door and they're wearing the socks? They're, they're toe socks, like, so that's extra weird. They'll just be like, nah, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> but it would be hilarious if it was like, a big country neighbor and like he's a big dude but he's wearing like women's socks <laughs> very obvious yeah. like split and it runs <laughs> yeah. going on through him. <laughs> and uh boy smart appliances who wants that i sure love them and yeah that's been the question always like every time we, we used to do stories all the time it's like oh here's a fridge with you know whatever a screen in the, it, yeah. yeah and it's like well who actually wants this and for once i feel good about humanity Appliance makers sad that 50% of customers won't connect their smart appliances. Did users change their Wi-Fi password or did they see the nature of IoT privacy? They saw the nature of IoT privacy. It's garbage. It's straight up garbage. Or the stuff they, that they bought is so out of date by the time they start to get around to it. They're like, oh, I guess I'll just use it as a fridge. There's There are dark patterns that are emerging in fridges. There's one of the Samsung ones that if you haven't connected the Wi-Fi in like six months, the door dispenser for water stops clicking like it's just like oh you need to and then you connect it to the wi-fi and it's like all right here you go and that's not the only thing that smart appliances do you see a smart appliance if you ask yourself how do they know <laughs> how do they know about that 50 percent? obviously because they're tracking it and they're tracking it in really dumb ways smart ovens do really dumb stuff to check for wi-fi so i guess because they wanted a global model Right. So like, well, whoever buys this, let's, let's just put the same software in all of them. So it checks Google. It checks, uh, was it Baidu and Yandex? Yeah. That means that your oven is hitting China and Russia IP addresses <laughs> every day. What could possibly go wrong? Um, there's a, cause we've done videos on pie hole. You should probably set up pie hole so you can see, I have a, a better insight into what stuff on your network is doing. But there's a couple threads in the forum where people have set up pie hole and then blocked things at pie hole. And then some of their appliances go nuts. It'll start trying to hit something thousands and thousands of times because it can't get to, you know, some sort of customer reporting portal or whatever. Oh. It's like Ooh. customer portal dot 
lgappliances.com and then you block that and then it's like what's going on and then it starts hitting you know a bunch of things and uh you know it's been a bad week for a lot of these companies that we're talking about but perhaps the worst week gets assigned to intel intel's horrible quarter revealed as an inventory glut and underused factories so intel had their quarterly earnings report uh it's uh it's I think that investors will freak out more or less on this, depending on what AMD's quarter is like, which they haven't reported yet. I was about to ask. So it really doesn't look good for Intel in any scenario. And it's just, it's been a year. It's been almost exactly a year. Uh, and the exact quote, I think, from Pat Gelsinger was, AMD is in the rearview mirror. Never again will they be out ahead. And so maybe, maybe not, but... It was abysmal for client sales. It was abysmal for server sales. They blame macroeconomic conditions. The profit is way down. They changed the way that they do capital accounting for equipment. So they depreciate equipment over a longer term, which is where a couple of billion dollars on their books came from in the way that they changed accounting. It was sort of, it feels very Enron-ish, which I'm a little worried about. But it was, they were really crushed by timing here because they were failing hard and then as they decided to try to turn it around and actually change what they were doing, we went into a hard recession. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I really like, I think Pat Gelsinger is the right guy, but I have a feeling that he's going to get a lot of pressure to not change things so quickly because what he's, I think what he's doing is going to be attributed to some of this, but I think that it is just, they're going to have to rip the bandaid off quickly and they're going to have to make a lot of changes. And he's, I think he's, probably the the only guy that can if there is any riding that ship he's probably the only guy that can do it well apple may be the big outlier because they've not announced huge layoffs yet have they no and uh can they hold out we don't know they are probably going to be putting a lot on this product to turn things around i don't see it the yeah. price point's crazy, and the technology so far has not sparked a lot of interest. Apple Reality Pro headset will toggle between AR and VR and serve as a Mac display and a two-hour external battery pack and more. Okay. Not really looking to invest in anything like that right now. $3,000. You know how many eggs I could buy with how that? How many Brussels sprouts could we put in the ground? For so that? many. <laughs> Seeds could, are like a dollar a pack. I could see something like if you had a pair of glasses... It was three thousand dollars and it replaced literally every display like you get close to this computer and it's a display for that computer you get close to this computer and it's a display for that computer and it replaces your phone display maybe makes your phone cost a little bit less your computer costs a little bit less three thousand dollars would not be crazy but the way that they've described it and everything else that they've put together yeah it's not it's not going to work like that for at least a few generations and Apple, uh, maybe one of the reasons that they are able to weather this kind of storm is because everything that they do is so insanely anti-consumer Yes, that they are fleecing you for ridiculous amounts. Now, if you're a, a Mac user and you're like, oh, I'm special because I got the T2 chip and I'm super secure. Well, yeah, you're probably right. But there are side effects of that. Perfectly good MacBooks from 2020 are being sold for scrap because of activation lock. It's almost impossible to resell a perfectly functional M1 MacBook because of Apple security features. This article has lots of fun laptops, like one that had four charge cycles on its battery. And they're like, well, this laptop works fine and it's been charged four times, but we can't sell it as used or give it to a student or anything because it's locked. We can harvest a couple of parts out of it, hmm. but can't use it as a laptop. That seems to go against Apple's stated goal <laughs> of wanting to be more green. Doesn't it though? Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like that's all just greenwashing. Yeah. It's 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 a level of corruption and deliberate evil that you just you can't condone. Well, the uh, the Moore's law argument, you know, we're still hotly debating that. Is it dead? Is it not? They put the numbers out there and they say, look, we're hitting those numbers. But there's another number that's very important, and that is the electricity that they're dumping into those <laughs> chips to get there. And that is something that not everybody expected. Intel and AMD just created a headache for data centers. Server silos didn't see today's watt gobbling <laughs> space heater chips coming. Yeah, it turns out most racks and most data centers, like even the ones that had a lot of foresight, they only planned on about 28 kilowatts, 20, no, 20, 28, 28,000 watts per rack. 
which is not a huge number of servers when you're talking about 350 to 400 watts a socket. And IBM, uh, you know, they might be using some of those same tricks that you were just talking about with Intel, because <laughs> they're definitely shuffling some things around to make the numbers look a little bit better. IBM Top Brass accused again of using mainframe sales to pop up Watson and Cloud sales. Hmm. So let's just move some of these zeros from this <laughs> column. Just put them over here. We're doing so well. I don't know. Everything's fine. Don't look at the, all the fire. Everything is fine. That's from the register, though. I, we got to see more sources of this. Somebody should dig into that. That was probably a paywall alternative. Um, and China getting some exciting new infrastructure. I don't know if this is really the time for that, but I guess if you're going to open back up, you know, you want the people to travel around, hit that herd immunity. This might be a way to do it in style. China launches a 100 mile per hour hydrogen supercapacitor train. Crying in American. <laughs> Hydrogen supercapacitor, okay, yeah, I mean, it kind of is, but it's not a maglev or anything you, like that. It's, yeah, it's not the fastest train. You got to look at the the reality of those infrastructure projects. We don't want those here. Yeah. Well. It's crazy. <laughs> it's all corruption. It seems good, but then the 100 mile per hour train doesn't have brakes. Or... Well, it'd be, it'd be nice if we had trains, like, especially, like, in the Northeast, more trains, I guess. But they have... Between cities. They have massive train stations and, like, hubs of, uh, you know, travel. And there's like 50 people in them at any given time. I think I remember somebody in our audience was a was a train aficionado, and I meant to look into it more. But apparently, there was a train that ran from Cincinnati to Washington D.C. to New York, and like that was it's like oh I want to go to New York City, and you just would hop on the train and get a sleeper car, and then you'd wake up in New York City or whatever. I know so many old ladies who would love that. They want to go see a Broadway show for that's, a weekend. I don't think that's a thing anymore, is it? I don't, I don't know think if, so either. I don't know if modern New York City would be what those old ladies expect. <laughs> they, want to see them, they want to see the Lion King on Broadway. Well, you're, gonna, go. you're going to see a lot more than that before uh -huh. you get there. And last week we learned about the FAA. They had a bit of an issue with their software, and it's because somebody edited the backup that was not supposed to be edited in production. <laughs> this week, the New York <laughs> Stock Exchange opened up, and the opening orders didn't work correctly. What could have caused it? New York Stock Exchange glitch traced back to an employee who left the backup system running, a report says. Can you imagine, like, they get that email and, like, the stomach drop when they realize, oh. I, just just go home. Yeah. yeah. You're fired. I mean, clean your desk out. Stay like, I feel sick for that person. <laughs> and Google has some uh, interesting, interesting new software here. I guess they want to do rapid app development, like the low code stuff. I don't know if the AI is going to be doing it. Why bother with this, right? <laughs> Google releases Flutter 3.7. Teasers a future of app development framework. Guess those people weren't laid off. Not yet. Can we have somebody that would, you know, really earnestly revisits what makes something actually useful for a mobile operating system? Well, it will be Google because Google's uh, software is all in decline. Maps, search, mail, Everything that Google does is either languishing or getting worse, which is astonishing. And Apple is not sitting idly letting that crisis go to waste. Apple beefs up its smartphone services in silent war against Google. The aforementioned categories, maps, search, advertising. Man, if the mm. DOJ wants to do that whole antitrust thing with Google, they really need to look into Apple right now. The changes that Apple is making, like they've got an A and like it. They, they get the perfect template for the before and after comparison in order to determine antitrust. Because right now, some things are still in the before state. And if you are an Apple user and you want to be really, really hardcore about security, I mean, it's a it would be an annoyance. How many times do you unlock your phone a day? About a million. I don't think you could ever. Yeah. You would lose it and then you'd, you'd go insane. Yeah. But if you're if you're one of those like foreign correspondents that's getting hacked in Europe or whatever, this might be the thing you need to do. I was 16.3 in Mac OS Ventura, 13.2 add hardware security key support, plus rapid security response rolls out to Mac OS. So yeah, I think that for the kind of adversary that's involved here, I think they're already running circles around Apple. They they probably have employees in Apple that are quietly subverting this in very subtle ways because that's cheaper. It's cheaper to pay somebody to go work for Apple that's putting bad things in. We know China's doing it. Yeah. Why wouldn't the other companies try yeah. it? You, the only way to really secure it is to give the individual the tools they need to make all kinds of choices that makes it impossible for an intelligence service to know 
what choices you made to secure your phone. You're not allowed to bring your own tools into the garden. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's the problem. You might hurt some of the topiaries. Yeah, you might bring in some spider mites. <laughs> you don't want spider mites or aphids or uh, potato bugs. Yeah. <laughs> you been doing pumpkins this year? Uh, I haven't bought seeds yet. I'm gonna try. I'm, I always say I'm not going to, but I might try them again. But I'm gonna plant them really late if I do. Mm. After the season for squash bugs, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. It was squash bugs, not potato. Yeah, yeah. Boiler Snake seems really interested in the squash bugs. Well, he was really upset about the pumpkin saga. Yeah. <laughs> he was rooting for Chris and her oh. failures really let him down. I got one pumpkin. It was a little sad, though. Well, uh, we've had this little war raging on. Google wants to send uh, or they want to block campaign emails, which is what they should be doing because no one wants them. Does anybody want, is anybody sitting there that's like, God, I wish somebody would campaign toward me right now. <laughs> I would feel so validated. I do need to give them my $50. <laughs> but uh, the uh, Republicans complained. They were like, hey, we've been watching and you've been, it's, it's not fair. You've been cutting Republican uh, ad campaigns, but you've been letting Democrats through. We want equal treatment. So Google was just like, all right, we're not going to filter that at all anymore. Apparently the people have spoken. <laughs> Google to stop exempting campaign email from automated spam detection. So everybody is going to get filtered. Woo! This is how it should be. Yeah. Yep. There is some small justice in the world. I mean, can you imagine if you've had J chat GPT sitting between you and your email and it's like, hey, chat GPT, I want you to deprioritize all these emails unless it really seems like it's super important. But this is just campaign finance spam. Don't even, I don't even ever want to see that. Chat GPT is like, okay, that level of computational horsepower analyzing every single inbound email that I had, it would melt the planet. Now, here's a tale as old as boy meets girl. <laughs> Big tech company makes a product. It sucks. Someone comes along and adds extra software to fix what sucks about big software. Big tech company then steals that software. It's the Disney model. Microsoft has copied the best Windows audio app. Windows 11 secretly includes an audio feature that is very similar to Ear Trumpet, a popular third party tool. So, everybody, go give Ear Trumpet a try while it still exists. Ear and Trumpet. If you develop Ear Trumpet, my condolences. I'm so sorry. Congratulations on your buyout. Uh, Assuming they get one. I don't know. They, 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 there's no money to change his hand. Maybe yeah. that was a different. It's like the Simpsons joke. It's like, this uh, might have been a different article, but I think the Ear Trumpet guy tweeted and he was like oh no they're catching up <laughs> so it seemed to like have a good uh maybe he is getting bought out maybe that's why he's so happy about it mm. i mean it's one thing if you make your living at that but if it's another thing if it's like i made this because it's splinter under my fingernail and i hate it <laughs> and it's like they're fixing it finally thank god i don't have to work on it anymore and this this is just such a nothing burger article do you think this is paid absolutely yes. because yeah, like not even a question you can already do this with your window management yeah. so like there's almost no advantage here why would the verge run this headline microsoft edge will soon let you split two tabs in a single window making this article completely useless because there's nothing you can do now cool story bro still gonna use firefox so wow look at that you know edge on linux is surprisingly not awful it's actually pretty good and uh we know that all the big governments of the world they want digital currencies they want online money, but not just them, also all the giant companies. Bank of America and JP Morgan and other banks reportedly team up on a digital rival, a digital wallet to rival Apple Pay. They're about five years late. <laughs> that first mover advantage with a five year lead time is substantial. But I mean, it is coming. It's going to be forced upon us. So to be in place to reap the benefit of that, I guess is a good idea. I can't wait for the day where if you want to be able to process Visa and MasterCard, it will only go through this and it mysteriously doesn't work on Apple Pay anymore. You got to think Tim Cook's aware of that and he's on top of the whole, the whole that aspect of it, which is why I partnered up with Goldman Sachs for the Apple Card. They're both frantically bribing members of Congress. <laughs> Who can bribe the most Congress members? Yeah. Uh, got to collect them all like Pokemon. Chris, are you still wordling? Yeah, I wordle. I had, I guess by the time they see this, it'll be late, but like last night's wordle was terrible. What was it? Worry. <laughs> and like, I hate That's... words with double letters because I never think until it's too late. So I like, I got most of the letters early and I just had like 10 tries trying to figure out what that last letter was. But that's such a great word for you. Yeah, it really is. You do tend to worry. Yeah, just a little. 
Anyway, I didn't know that there were a bunch of clones that were also getting huge buyouts, but hey, what an easy thing to do, right? Yeah. Just steal that guy's game and then sell it for millions. Wordle clone Quirtle acquired by Merriam Webster. I think Quirtle is like, it's four. They show you get more yeah. opportunities. I can see for like the, the hardcore addicts. It's like, yeah, like not, one a I'm day isn't going to do me. Yeah. I, I can't get into those. I really like Wordle. Amazon for a long time, and they got slapped down in regulatory for this, right? The yep. People was like, no, that's a little too scary. We can't do it. But they've been sort of like nibbling on the edges since yeah. then. This is a pretty big bite. Amazon deepens healthcare push with a $5 monthly subscription, according to Reuters. $5 a month gets you into automatic, you can like get automatic subscriptions for generic drugs. It's kind of like, uh, who was the billionaire who did that? Cuban, Cuban I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like his service. Yeah. His service is growing like crazy. Yeah, a lot of people say it's actually quite quite good. I haven't used it, but I don't know if it's true or not. But he likes to brag that he's had insane buyout things, and he's just like, "I'm not doing this for the money." I mean, it was like the money's nice, but they're they keep upping upping how much they offer me, which is way more than the business is worth now, which tells me that this is really ruffling some feathers or some I, some quote to that effect. I'm sure one of those offers is Pfizer. <laughs> yeah it's like you need to stop this. we cannot have this and, and once pfizer realizes they can't get him with money they're probably going to send the goons uh, <laughs> he's going to get the elon musk treatment yeah i think if he if he were to let it get bought out you think they would just ruin it immediately yeah oh yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. oh you know nobody used it after we ruined it so i guess we're just gonna have to shut it would down you, would you look at that we had a fentanyl contamination everybody died <laughs> There's no way that they could sell those drugs at those prices, even in volume, and make more money than they could shutting it down and selling their yeah. drugs. For yeah, and just re-upping the patent every year. And another thing that companies can do and get away with pretty consistently is just treating their employees like garbage and making their workplaces unsafe and anti-competitive and, really importantly, the whole union issue. Apple reaches deal with investors to audit its labor practices. The tech giant will assess its compliance with official human rights policy, according to a federal filing. You know that it's really, there's some dark things going on when your investors are like, we're not, we're not grinding up human beings in a wood chipper in order to make iPhones, are we? And Apple's like, we're not talking to we you. We put nets in to keep them out of the wood grinder. Yeah, the lawyers are like, well, we take the organs, but we don't grind them. <laughs> Say no to that. <laughs> There's no dark pattern here. <laughs> what are you talking about? And uh, we see the, the never-ending saga of these big tech lawsuits. They just go on for decades, and it's never really settled. But this one now has been settled with prejudice, which means that it should be over. <laughs> Six years later, HP Enterprise and Oracle quietly shut the door on the Solaris lawsuit. The details are not, we don't know. We don't know. But they've mute, They've agreed to shut it. It is closed with prejudice, which means that it cannot be reopened. And it was over something trivial and nonsensical to begin with. Made a lot of people probably very rich. Probably a lot of lawyers. Yeah, yeah. the legal team has definitely been doing well. I bet all their kids have perfect dental hygiene. Mm -hmm. And uh, New York State is looking to make a $15 broadband available to everybody. Of course, this is from the whole lockdown situation. We're all trapped inside. We need the internet in order to do things in the world. They, we reported on this previously, and we reported they agreed to this. This was a concession. Well, that was then. <laughs> Telecom giants head to court to kill New York State's demand. They give poor people $15 broadband, something they previously agreed to in order to get tax breaks and infrastructure money. But you got to read their quote. Now, they did reference that. They said, yeah, <laughs> we did agree to $15. We're okay with $15. But if we let this happen, what if other states want to go below $15? We cannot set the precedent. Like they actually said that in a press I, release. I can't say anything because it would be technically supporting violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want do you want an axe murdering? Because this is how you <laughs> We don't condone axe murder for this channel. <laughs> But well, I'm just saying if it happened, I would understand, maybe. Yeah. I mean. 
certainly could see why. The lawyers just laugh and they're like, ah, we're just going to tie this up. We just published some word salad in a press release just to get them riled up. We, we'll have this Let's thing tied lunch, up for, for, for years and years and years. Uh, now, Netflix, they did some layoffs. Oh, just a few. They're having a tough time, but they are going forward with one of their shows, which is uh, based off of their big hit, Squid Game. They're doing the Squid Game reality show. Now, if you're not familiar with Squid Game, it's a show about people killing one another in order to win money. So they created a reality version of that, and they were just absolutely shocked that these people were willing to kill each other to get the money. Netflix denies any Squid Game reality show contestants have suffered serious injury. Maybe a couple minor cases of hypothermia, some exhaustion. They mentioned it was really cold. Couple scrapes and bruises, but ah, nothing to worry about. It's fine. So they clearly underestimated the need for money, the yeah. desire for free money. So I think they were playing this. That you guys haven't watched the show, right? Yeah. I'm, is, I'm vaguely familiar with it, but I haven't watched it. Well, you know the stop and go game. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that it was the stop and go game, and the people were so good at it. Like they were, they were so hardcore about doing it correctly and not moving a muscle that they started to suffer these long-term physical effects and people started just collapsing. Fascinating. Wild. And uh, <clears throat> Netflix, of course, with laying off people, they cut a lot of shows. They've always been cutting a lot of shows. <laughs> and people get really spicy when you cut off a here, show that they love. Here comes your engagement challenge. And... Uh, so a lot of people, of course, over the years, they've been loving shows, Netflix canceled, and they're like, why would you do this? And then even some other networks will pick them up, and yeah. they'll be successful, which makes this perhaps a lie. Ted Sarandos insists that Netflix has, quote-unquote, never canceled a successful show. He then defines successful as small sh like a small, uh, a small audience has a small budget, a large audience has a large budget. And if it's like really popular with a small audience, but it has a large budget, they cut it. Boy Snake is really piped up. Yeah. Yeah. He's he they canceled some shows on him. He's furious. Engagement challenge. What Netflix show did you really like that they just At this point they kind of have a reputation for canceling things like before they can really yeah. get started. And I I, loved, I just thought this was fun because uh you know, we have obviously the drug industry, which is as evil as an industry can be, but we also have television news which is suffering. They are not getting the viewers. That sort of creates an unholy marriage <laughs> where one is willing to pay to get whatever they want and the other one is willing to take money to do whatever the other one wants. <laughs> to, to continue to survive. Drug maker paid for a quote-unquote news story on CBS's 60 Minutes, a doctor's group alleges. So this is one of those drugs where the patent expired and they've tweaked it very slightly and they're not going to make the drug that's not patented anymore because the patent has expired, but they're making another drug that is very similar to the patented drug that is just different enough to be patented. And the doctor's group came out and said, what is this madness? I really hope somebody from Mark Cuban's organization is watching and can start making the drug that the patent expired on like pretty much immediately. Like just send that email. No, this is the Elon Musk weight loss drug. Oh, is it? I think so. Right. Weight but, loss drug. You mean the diabetes drug that, but now they're marketing it for, yeah. So they were like, oh. And now diabetics were like, I can't get my medicine. So the whole, no, the whole reason they couldn't get the medicine, oh, we've been subterfuged the whole time. It all makes sense now. They cut production because the patent was about to expire and they have a new thing that replaces the old thing that's patented. Because other manufacturers couldn't make it before the patent expired. Engagement challenge, but I'm pretty sure Wegovy or Wegovy, that's the drug, right? That's the Musk drug. I'm not sure the name if, of it. If we were bamboozled, man, that's that's brilliant though. It's like the Elon Musk weight drug, weight loss drug is in short supply because Elon Musk said it was great for weight loss. When in reality, the reason it was in short supply was because the patent was ending and they stopped producing it until they could get the patent on the new thing and the thing approved. I mean, it could be two things at once too. Like, well, it doesn't yeah. have to be just one or the other. But that's insane. That's a level of insanity that's just incredible. I'd like to point out that there was a House MD episode in season one when he was talking to Vogler that has this exact same plot. <laughs> you think they're getting their ideas from that now? Yeah, they're like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not House just commenting on an issue that was happening in healthcare. That was what, 10 years ago? Yeah, years ago? it was a, quite a while ago. We're almost ready for a House reboot. 
Oh my god. Oh no, you can't replace <laughs> Hugh Laurie was so good in that role. Actually, everybody was pretty good in that show. There's no way that you could woke up House and still have the same personality. You could still make him pretty offensive, I think. It wouldn't be him. I think, you know, in some ways, if we if we did some from some gender reassignment there, I think it would be uh I think people would be a lot more tolerant of of it would be a lot more believable how tolerant people would be of an abrasive house type character that is gender bent. No. No? You don't oh my, think so? What, how about Wendell, every time <laughs> well, yeah, we yeah, have yeah. been in a meeting and yeah. I have been even a teensy bit abrasive or if I don't make my tone just so, people get real salty. That, yeah. that character does not work if it's a woman. How about we make House transgender mm. and then the reason the hospital can't get rid of him isn't his skill. It's just because he's transgender and you mm. can't find him. There's a storyline like that in House already. Obviously, <laughs> clearly didn't watch every season the repeatedly. The writers thought of that. How yeah. insane is There's that? There's a character... Where like a nurse is dating someone in, in accounting and that guy's transgender and Wilson wants to talk about it with House, but he's like, I have to be your conscience. I don't remember what season that is, but I'm sure someone else. House wanted to talk about it, but Wilson was like, no, we can't talk about it because you've done stupid, unethical thing again. And now I have to be your conscience. Like every episode of House. Wilson was a loser. No, the whole the whole beauty of that show was their relationship. The bromance between House and Wilson. Should we do a House special? I just <laughs> I really <laughs> love the show and I've been rewatching it. I mean, I like it too. <laughs> well, let's move on to social media. Now, I've always wondered, I knew that the kids were on Snapchat, but I never understood really why. Like, what about Snapchat made them want to use it <laughs> so much? Apparently, it's to buy pills. FBI probes Snapchat's role in fentanyl poisoning deaths. Apparently, it had some non zero role. So. People dealing pills on Snapchat, that's nothing new, but the problem with these new pills is the people selling them don't know what they are. So you think you're buying a, you know, patent drug pain pill, but no, you're buying a counterfeit fentanyl pill, which will kill you. And that happened a couple of times. So now the feds are going to be looking at your snap logs. There's a, there's a quote in this article too, where they said like, this is not a social media problem. This is strictly like something that happens more on Snapchat than anyone else, which is really strange. Cause they think that it's ephemeral. I think it's going to go yeah. away, but it, it, pro doesn't, tip, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't go away. The feds are going to be able to look through all those messages. And uh chat GPT, it's changing the world. Mm. It's everything. Everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody loves it. You can't get enough headlines unless you're a company that was, previously doing stuff like that and somehow you didn't get it first chat gpt is quote unquote not particularly innovative and nothing revolutionary says meta's chief ai scientist all right well then put up or shut up let's see the chat bot on facebook that no, is as useful no 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 he says it's not that we didn't want him like it's not that we couldn't have made that we could have made that so easily we got so many chat gpts you, you'd blow your mind but that would hurt our company mm. so we don't release those that's bad we could just like I could bench press 500 pounds, but I don't like to. I don't like to because of the noise that makes <laughs> my elbows <laughs> oh. turning into powder. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, uh, like exactly what this means in terms of Instagram, but I know that they didn't want to do this <laughs> and they were forced to Instagram now lets you pause notifications with quiet mode. Meanwhile, we at level one will be adding a feature to the forum called Goblin Mode. <laughs> Is there? So wait, there was no, it blows my mind. I don't have Instagram, but like, was there no way to turn off notifications before? Were you just if, constantly getting? If you were getting messages, I think. Mm -hmm. So this mode will automatically reply and say, this person isn't taking messages right now. Wow. How insane is it going to be that if things continue on this trajectory, a future version of the Windows operating system is going to have a toggle between quiet mode and goblin mode? <laughs> I would think quiet mode would be goblin mode, like where you're just doing your own thing and like. It's got to take it further, right? Yeah. yeah. Got, what if goblin mode does all that, but it also dims the screen down to like at most ten percent? It turns it on to high contrast mode. <laughs> Cuts the blue light out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, how many times has this happened? We found out that some company taking our data wasn't just taking our data to make the product better, as they say, and make our experience better. They were taking it to sell it <laughs> to a third party. Home Depot Canada routinely shared customer data with Facebook owner, privacy commissioner fines. Yep. Don't, 
I had to explain this one. I was like, when some, when a place asks for your email address, don't give it to them. Just tell them no. If you're still watching, allow me to assist you with your targeted advertising. I would like to buy an aluminum stepladder. Wouldn't an aluminum stepladder be a delicious, awesome product to buy? I need an aluminum stepladder step ladder because I'm going to paint my house and have a drop cloth and some paint brushes and all that sort of thing. I'll give you a better way of doing it, Kristen. What you do is you give them a really long email that is a criticism of that particular person. <laughs> not to the person. That's yeah, not no. their fault. Do you do it to Home Depot? No, no, no. Look, if you are the blade, if Home Depot is the arm and you are the blade, you are part of the problem. I have. I will say that uh, the email address, you know, my, my the first part of my email plus Lowe's had better damn well not sell my email address at <laughs> gmail.com does get a lot of spam. Just put webmaster at lowes.com. <laughs> probably, it, you, here's the line. You want to be below this line, but get as close to it as you can. Don't use this cashier at gettingstabbed.com. <laughs> <laughs> or just ask for a print receipt. This Washington Post story, I kind of got lost in it because it was so yeah, biased and one-sided. But they do point out an important thing, which is, we spent all this money and we did all this theater and they actually found some problems. But when they found the problems, it was like, well, that does, that's not about Donald Trump. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> the, the headline, the MSN headline is what the January 6th probe found out about social media, but didn't report. Which is social media was like doing nothing to stop any of this content, even when they were told over and over like, hey, because people love this content. They click mm -hmm. on it. It's a big driver for their sales it's anger clicks. well had it been other different kinds of content would there have been screeching that it was being suppressed would we be having the section 230 debate like if people are doing awful terrible things with the tool they've been given does that mean that we need to lock the tool down somehow also i missed the story i completely forgot about it and this just shows how much that star has fallen but uh donald trump back on facebook hmm no one cared. Yeah. Hmm. Is he putting stuff on Marketplace? That's the only way I care. I've not checked it out. I'm not. Is he putting any cursed either. objects on Marketplace? <laughs> Maybe some documents. I was driving by. Lightly used. I drove by tire discounters and their sign said uh, free classified documents with every sale. Wow. I thought that was funny. But that could go either way. Yeah. That, was a, that was a safe one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, TikTok. Uh, one thing, oh, the other thing that we learned, which was a late, did I put that in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just learned the, like the, Elon Musk always gets us with the late story on Friday. We got yeah. him this time. We got him. But we got it this time. And it's the same story as we're finding out that TikTok does. TikTok confirms that its own employees can decide what goes viral. I think this is going to be true. I, the, the YouTube algorithm seems to be like this as well. Like they don't want anything weird on trending. So like normy friendly content is the only thing that ever shows up on trending that's minecraft videos pop music videos and they point out that like it's called heat or something like that and you put heat on a post and it's very invisible what happens but it just climbs right up the ladder when mm -hmm. you do that also tiktok is uh spawning some cottage industries I, it described this and it seemed to me like somebody who was live vlogging is live well, vlogging a federal crime now? But they're processing payments. <laughs> I think that's where they're going to get you because gambling is illegal in some of the places. I I think we've been borderline with this on some of the Twitch streams where it's like, who wants to bet how many bits with whatever? Although they can never collect the but bits. It's not bits. Bubbles, it's yeah. not bits. It's the Twitch points, which have no monetary value at all. <laughs> this has actual monetary value. Uh, Adina Man, is that how you say that, where this is? Uh, I think so. Uh, Adina Man and his brother are running illegal remote TikTok bookie business. So what would happen is they were live streaming and people would give them $100 and they would keep 25 and they would bet 75 And then if they won, they would give the money back to whoever gave them the money. And you get to see the actual spin, so they're not cheating you. Now, somebody with some video knowledge could easily fake that and rob you blind. That is a dumb thing to do. Don't do that. They're not going to let them do it anymore either. Probably for the best. It's probably unnecessary to rob them blind since the people doing the live streaming are on the side of the house and everything is rigged so that the house wins anyway. Just don't and be greedy. 
And if you think back when Mr. Elon Musk was trying to get out of the Twitter purchase before he actually bought it, Twitter hired some outside counsel to debunk some of his claims to try to say that he could get out of the deal. In his mind, it seems that I didn't hire those people. I'm not going to pay them. <laughs> Twitter hired experts for case against Musk. Now Musk won't pay them, the lawsuit says. The company says it wasn't paid for work on the lawsuit that forced Musk to complete the merger. And also, there's a bunch of landlords that are upset Musk hasn't paid for anything. Seems he's been be, multiple countries. He's yeah. not paying a lot of bills. Yeah. I've done some work for some wealthy people, and they follow the same pattern. Like, getting money out of them is just impossible. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're wealthy. Yeah. I mean, if I just didn't pay people I hired, bad things would happen to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anymore, it's like, you're going to have to pay, like, a lot of money up front if you want me to care about that. And mm -hmm. pe most people are like, okay, that's fine. And the big late headline is about Twitter as well. It's, uh, this was, what was this dude's name? Some guy, uh, Dave Rubin did a big thread and, uh, Elon Musk did come at the end of the thread and said that it is an accurate thread. So he's <laughs> kind of signed off of it. What we got here, the big takeaway here is that, uh, unlike what, uh, who was the old CEA? What was his name? I can't remember. The old Twitter CEO. Yeah. The one. Uh, they got rid of Mudge, which is bad. I can't, can't remember, remember his name. name. Anyway, Agarwal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that guy, I think under oath, right, said that there was no such thing as shadow bans. Turns out that's wrong. According to Mr. Musk. Elon Musk reportedly considering a full Twitter overhaul. Quote, unquote, it's a flaming dumpster. Feel bad for the people that are still working at Twitter in goblin mode? Literally oh. having to sleep at the office because they're not allowed to go home. Yeah. you never know when he's going to show up. Yeah. So... Uh, I will I will have to give Elon Musk some credit, though. Remember when it was once he's got the keys to Twitter, it's going to go down horribly. It has had some technical problems, a lot of technical problems. Yeah. It has been really weird and glitchy, but he's managed not to completely destroy it. But he hasn't dead. managed anything. His poor, <laughs> overworked employees have managed to not let it go down. Well, I mean, too. look, Tim Cook's not doing anything. Uh -huh. That's, but what he claims is uh, sort of like, well... We looked at maybe just unplugging the shadow ban system, but everything is so integrated that if we pull one Jenga block out, <laughs> it's all done. So that's why he's talking about like starting over. It's ambitious. Let's see what we got there. That was a long one. Forty-seven. The, the more the the thing that struck me though is um, you remember the Twitter CEO Dorsey, like the original Twitter CEO. The more that Musk says these things i wonder if he has any introspection at all for because dorsey has said a lot of the same stuff and in the beginning musk and dorsey were at, were at each other's throats or at least that was my impression and um the more recent quotes from musk seem to echo what dorsey's saying and if he's going to overhaul twitter isn't that what dorsey is doing with his open protocol thing where it's like hey we're gonna have this public square protocol where everybody can participate and say things and it'll be like Twitter and it'll work like Twitter, but under the hood, it's decentralized. But then they reveal that a lot of that like CIA stuff, Dorsey wasn't necessarily like they didn't let him know. Yeah, that's true. The board was just acting and like, they were like, Oh yeah, he just don't bother him with that. And he was yeah. doing other stuff. Yeah. Well, it, like the decentralization thing working on that. Yeah. So I guess Dorsey could have accurately testified under oath that is like, there is no shadow ban system, but only because it didn't come up in any of the stuff that he was doing. Probably not a very good CEO, though, if that yeah. can go under your nose. But if you're going to have to re-architect everything, then Dorsey's already got the blueprint for it. So Twitter doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, it's it a pretty basic system. It doesn't do a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does, but that's all spying. Well, would you say it's more complicated advertising to transition Twitter seamlessly from the dumpster that it is now to the simple thing we're imagining? Yeah, we just build the API and yeah. okay, maybe we add the evil stuff later, <laughs> but let's not make it part of the foundation. Yeah. But I think the transition would be more complicated than building the thing. Yeah, you I know don't what? know that Musk is in a position to actually see that through. Yeah. Let's just leave some sarcophagi spaces in the foundation rather than putting the bodies directly in <laughs> and it opens up more for the future <laughs> what's this square opening oh that's the paste for the body paste but body paste yeah we liquefy you and pour you into the foundation through the patented body chute 
Mostly so that way the employees, when they break, they can't come take your corpse into the conference room. <laughs> we have to feed the machine spirits blood every now and then. That's fine. <laughs> Kristen, right. would you please take us out with just a, a little asparagus dance? Not asparagus. Brussels sprout. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. asparagus is totally different. Oh. It's the Brussels sprouts. Bye! Bye!